Okay. So we saw in the previous video, we saw a puck sliding across uh, the floor, and we saw that if we looked at all the energies that could potentially uh, be involved, these, these guys, then we saw that there'd be no potential energy change, there's no source energy change, it was simply kinetic energy be co being converted into thermal energy. Okay? Now, if we look at, uh, so these are, there's an interaction there, right? If we look at an interaction between two cars and they, um, they have some kind of collision, again, if we consider these guys, delta K plus delta U plus delta ES plus delta E thermal, then we know that there'll be a change in kinetic energy. There won't be any change permanent change in potential energy. In an elastic collision, um, at some point there will be uh, an increase in potential energy because these objects will deform and then go back to their original position. So temporarily, they, in an elastic collision, you will have some kinetic, uh, sorry, some potential energy, but then it'll go back to its original position. So there will be no change in potential energy in an elastic collision. And also in, um, in inelastic collisions as well, okay? Then, unless there's an explosion of some sort, we won't really consider any change in source energy. So this is, this is why we get this for a collision, okay? So please, guys, I, I really don't want you to memorize these kinds of things, but I want you to go to first principles. Consider all the energies that are, might be involved. And then from this, this big guy, get this specific kind of energy equation. Okay. Now, in an elastic collision, your delta E thermal is zero. So this equation still holds, even for an elastic collision. So in elastic collision, this will just be zero, and then delta K is zero, which we've seen before. Um, but if it's inelastic, okay, inelastic collision, then we can consider this equation, which is from chapter five, if I'm not mistaken, chapter five. Remember that the mu is your reduced inertia, your V12 is your relative velocity, initial relative velocity, and your E is your coefficient of restitution. So if we look at this equation, we say delta E thermal is the negative delta K, we will get, we'll get this guy. So this basically just tells us in an inelastic collision, how much kinetic energy is converted to thermal energy. What is your delta K? And your delta K is equal to your, your th change in thermal energy. Okay, so let's do an example. Here we've got a car traveling at 10 meters per second and a stationary car, and they both have the same inertia, 1,000 kilograms. They collide and they, they get attached to each other. Okay, so, they, so we have a, what is it? A totally inelastic collision. Okay, so let's look at the energy states before we even look at the question. Here we again look at these energies K, U, E, S, E thermal. We have a high kinetic energy. There's no potential energy because there, there aren't any springs and there's no gravity. Okay, remember that's to do with springs and gravitational potential energy. Okay, then there's no source energy at this state. Um, and and there's no, we don't consider any thermal energy. Okay, so how much energy is dissipated in the collision? Okay, so they collide and then they travel at the same speed. So it's a totally an elastic collision. So how much energy is dissipated? What, what we can do is we can calculate delta K. What is the change in my kinetic energy? And the change in my kinetic energy would be K final minus k initial and k final would be this the kinetic energy 
of the entire system, sorry, K initial will be the kinetic energy of, the, of both cars in the system. You add them up. K final is the kinetic energy of both cars in the system. Okay, so let's look at what is Ki. How do you calculate that? You would calculate Ki this way. So the initial kinetic energy is, remember you've got two cars, the one is going at 10 meters per second, and they're both 1,000 kilograms, both of them. Okay, so we're only going to have the kinetic energy of the first vehicle, half one times 1,000 times 10 meters uh, per second squared. So we get 50 kilojoules initial, initial energy, kinetic energy is... Uh, 50 kilojoules. Now we need to calculate our K final, which also is half MV final squared. And this V final is going to be, they're, they're both moving at the same speed. So we just have to calculate the speed of both of these cars moving that are moving at the same velocity now. And how would we do that? Well, again, um, conservation of momentum. We had M1 v1 here plus plus m2 v2 but that is equal to zero these are the initial we have the initial on the right hand side and then they stick together we add their two velocities to get that <coughs> and then we calculate for our final velocity so we've got half total m total uh, inertia times the velocity is 25 kilojoules so now the delta K is this. We lose 25 kilojoules and it gets converted to thermal energy. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Now, if we look at this equation, we can also use this equation to validate because it says use equation 726 to verify your results. Okay? So we just calculated this because we were able to find the initial and final kinetic energies. Another way is, is to use this equation where that is your reduced inertia. Let's have a look at how they calculate it. So there we have it. There's your reduced inertia. That's over there. Then that's your relative velocity. The relative velocity is simply um, the relative speed uh, before collision. So it's 10 meters per second. Okay, that's what it is. And then your reduced inertia is uh, that, and you get 25 kilojoules. So remember, delta K is, the, is equal to the negative of delta E thermal. So E thermal is 25, and it's 25. Okay? Cheers.